So the main risk factors for heart failure are similar to the risk factors for developing a heart attack. And in fact, having a heart attack is the common cause of heart failure. So these risk factors are smoking, being overweight, having high blood pressure, having a high cholesterol, and being physically inactive. There are also some genetic risk factors for heart failure, and some people have a genetic cardiomyopathy as a cause of the heart failure. And heart failure gets more common if you're a man and as you get older. So the early warning signs of heart failure are the symptoms uh, the patients uh, tend to uh, present with heart failure, and that would be breathlessness. So a feeling that you can't do the same as you used to do, you can't run for the bus, you can't climb a flight of stairs without getting very breathless uh, at the end of that. Uh, and a general fatigue and inability to, to do what you used to do. Uh, tiredness and fatigue are common symptoms, but not really a useful warning sign of heart failure since it's such a common uh, symptom. Uh, patients can often get breathless when they lie down in bed at night, uh, and that is more uh, of a useful marker of, of heart failure if patients complain that they're breathless when they lie down. Uh, they uh, can take to having to use several pillows to prop themselves up at night because they feel uncomfortable when they lie flat uh, and may even have a feeling that they're, they're going to drown. Uh, so patients often say that they start to prop the bed up at night uh, or they wake up, wake up in the middle of the night feeling breathless and having to sit up for a period of time. They might notice that their ankles swell up and they develop fluid retention. And if that becomes worse, then you can even get fluid retention in your stomach. Uh, and that is often associated with a loss of appetite. So um, patients may say, I'm not eating, I'm not enjoying my food, uh, but they're actually gaining weight because they're increasing the amount of fluid in their body. Associated with heart failure, they may have other symptoms that commonly go with heart failure, such as palpitations, uh, dizziness uh, or chest discomfort. It might be a clue to uh, the underlying problem being the heart uh, not working well. So when you go to your doctor and the doctor thinks you might have heart failure, uh, they'll listen to your story and see whether your symptoms and your signs uh, might fit with heart failure uh, and put that into context with the uh, history of your uh, past problems. Uh, and that would give a clue to whether your symptoms could be due to heart failure. Uh, you'd be examined to see if you've got signs of fluid overload, uh, any problems with how your heart sounds when you listen to see whether you might have uh, valve problems or uh, rhythm problems with the heart. Uh, and then simple tests uh, that would be done uh, would be an ECG, uh, which would point to see whether there's any rhythm problems to account for the heart or any signs you might have had a heart attack in the past. Uh, simple blood tests that can be done include a blood test called BNP, uh, which is a useful screening test for heart failure. Uh, it's particularly useful uh, when it comes back normal or very low because that makes it very unlikely that you've got heart failure. Uh, however, if it comes back raised, that doesn't necessarily mean you've got heart failure, but means it's worthwhile doing further tests. Uh, those further tests uh, would in the first place almost always be an ultrasound scan of the heart called an echocardiogram, and the ultrasound gives us a very detailed way of looking at the heart function uh, to look for any signs of valve problems, any signs that you might have uh, had a heart attack in the past, uh, and also to quantify how well the heart is uh, working. Sometimes uh, that's not enough to know what the uh, underlying problems are, and you might need more detailed tests, uh, such as an MRI scan of the heart, uh, and those simple tests initially can point towards uh, underlying causes that they themselves may need uh, further uh, treatment depending on, on what's picked up on those initial tests. So there's two so arms to treatment for heart failure. One is to concentrate on the symptoms of heart failure and the commonest uh, treatment there uh, would be uh, water tablets, medicines that make you pee. Uh, these medicines get rid of the fluid uh, that uh, you've accumulated uh, and help re reduce the swelling and improve the breathing. Uh, but they don't necessarily make you live any longer, they're just treating the symptoms. Um, some patients with advanced heart failure uh, can benefit from small doses of morphine to help with the feeling of breathlessness. Uh, and again, uh, that is treating the symptoms. Uh, however, the mainstay of treating heart failure is in giving you medicines that not only uh, in the long term make you feel better, uh, but can improve the long term prognosis and treat the underlying causes of heart failure. Uh, and there's now uh, a considerable body of medicines that we can use uh, to control the heart uh, function and improve the heart function over time. And so almost irrespective of what the underlying cause 
of the heart failure is. Uh, there are medicines that we can uh, use to uh, treat the heart failure. Now, if there's a specific cause for the heart failure, such as a valve not working well, uh, or you've just had a heart attack and your arteries are blocked, uh, then treating that blocked artery, treating that damaged valve, uh, also treats the underlying heart failure. And in those situations, we often see the heart recovering well. Heart failure isn't always curable, but there are some causes of heart failure uh, that are curable. Uh, and we see patients going back to having entirely normal heart function again. Um, that might be in situations where the heart's been damaged due to drugs. And one of the commonest drugs that can damage the heart is alcohol. And if uh, you're able to abstain from alcohol, then your heart can come back to normal. And some drugs such as chemotherapy can damage the heart. And again, once the chemotherapy stops, the heart can often recover and come back to normal. But in a lot of cases with heart failure, unfortunately, uh, there isn't a cure for the underlying cause and we're left treating the heart failure itself uh, and uh, managing the symptoms and improving prognosis with the medications that we have available. So heart failure does sound a rather scary term. It doesn't mean that your heart has failed. Um, it just means it's not working at the full capacity that we'd expect it to do. Uh, however, that said, heart failure is uh, a very serious condition, um, particularly if you've um, been bad enough to be admitted with heart failure. Uh, and uh, studies have shown uh, that heart failure perhaps knocks 10 years off your life expectancy. In other studies, uh, they've shown that uh, after five years, unfortunately, perhaps half uh, of the patients with heart failure have died. Uh, however, because there's a huge number of different ways that heart failure presents a, a lot of different underlying causes for heart failure, it's not possible to give uh, an overall uh, impression of how long you are going to live just because you've been labelled with a diagnosis of heart failure. It's very specific to the patient themselves um, and it's not like a cancer where uh, if the cancer is not curable then you will inevitably eventually die of a, a cancer. Heart failure is one of these conditions that is very variable in uh, how things progress one of the um, useful signs that you're doing well from heart failure is if you're able to adhere to the medications, get onto good strengths of the medicines, uh, and thus also able to avoid being admitted to hospital with heart failure. Um, and those are perhaps even uh, more useful ways of assessing someone's prognosis uh, than looking at numbers such as uh, the quantity of how well the heart works on an ultrasound scan. And those are the ways we assess uh, after knowing someone for a period of time, how we feel the prognosis is going to be. So it's a, it's a very uh, individualized uh, assessment, but still uh, really not possible to predict someone's future with great accuracy.